Hello everyone. Welcome back to Maximum Automation. Today in this video, I'm going to show you how you can generate or publish the test result output in Jenkins. When we execute our test, then based on the test case executions, I should be able to display or publish the test result. And the test result counts like how many test cases failed or how many test cases pass. In my last video, we saw how we can execute the Selenium test created using N unit framework. So now we'll see how we can publish or get the result count of test execution in Jenkins to display that how many test cases pass or fail as part of the current execution. So let's get started. This is my Jenkins, and here is my automation N unit project. First of all, what we need to do is because I'm using my test framework as an unit. So I need to first install the N unit plugin. We can go to the manage Jenkins. And then under manage Jenkins, you can click on manage plugin. And on the plugin manager screen, you can go to the available tab. And then you can type N unit. Right now, I won't get that N unit plugin listed under available tab because I have already installed that plugin. If I go to the install tab and type N unit, then you can see that I have already installed the N unit plugin. So, in your case, if you have not installed that plugin already, then you can install it from the available tab. Also, if you are using your test framework as MS test or X unit, then you have to install the corresponding plugin. If it is MS test, then you have to install the MS test plugin. If you are using X unit as a test framework, then you have to install the X unit plugin. Because I'm using N unit as my test framework, so I have installed the N unit plugin. Once you are done with the installation, then we can go back to the dashboard. And after that, what we need to do is we need to generate the results after the test execution. So for that, let's go to the project and then configure option. Here, I'll go to the build step. This is our .NET run unit test step. This step is used to run the unit tests which we have in the project. Here we are using .NET SDK to execute our test. And once the test execution is done, then we need to publish the test result to display how many test cases failed or how many test cases pass. Which will basically display the status of our test execution. So that part will be covered in the post build actions because as part of the build, we'll build our project, clean our directory, or we'll execute our test. But once the test execution is done, then we have to get the test result status from the last execution. So we'll perform that operation in post build actions. If we go to the post build action and then click on this drop down, then you can see here the option publish n unit test result report the moment you install the n unit plugin you will get this publish n unit test result option in the drop down in case you want to publish a ms test result or x unit test result then in that case you have to install the plugin for the same and after that once you are done with the installation then you'll get this test result option for the corresponding test framework. Because I'm using N unit as my test framework, so I'll click on this publish N unit test result report. And after that, you have to specify the location where my test results has been generated. So after the test execution, an XML will be generated. And that test result XML will be used by this step to publish the result. Now the question comes, how we'll get that 
test result XML file. To get the test result or XML file, let's move back to the .NET Run Unit Test step. And here, click on More Options. Currently, this command only runs .NET Test. So when we perform the .NET Test command, then our test cases will get executed. And if I want to filter my test, then we can provide the filter expressions over here. Like I can filter my test by a test category equal to smoke. And under more options, you can see that we have one field called inline run settings. We can provide values in inline run settings. For example, if I want to generate my test result, then I can pass the command argument for the same. And the command to generate the test result is an unit dot test output XML equal to result location. So this will be the location where I want that test result output XML to be generated. And then we can provide the location where we want to generate our test result XML file. So you can paste the location over here. If you notice this location, then this location is the workspace of my Jenkins project. I'll tell you the reason why I have given this location. So what this step will do, when this step will get executed, it will run all the test and this command line argument will be generating my test result XML file and will place that XML file into this location. And after that, once we have our test result XML file ready, then in post build action step, what we'll do, we have added one publish and unit test result report step. And if you see in that report, what we need to provide, we need to provide the location where our XML file is placed. You can see over here that the base directory from which this plugin will pick the result XML file is the base directory of the workspace. So this is the reason why I have provided my workspace location to generate the test result output XML file. The file will be placed under the workspace of my project. And this plugin will read the same XML file from here. So what can I do? I can provide my XML file like this, which will search for an XML file with any name. The root location of my workspace is this. If you want, you can add another folder over here. If you want to generate your result in a specific folder, then you can provide the folder name. And then the same folder you have to specify over here also. Now under the base directory, it will search for this folder and under this folder, it will search for this XML file. So you can provide the folder name based on your need where you want to generate the results. Currently, in my case, this will be generated under this base directory and the same will be picked from the base directory itself. Now let me save the changes. And then I'll click on this build now to queue the build. You can see the build has been started. And if I go inside this build, then to the console output, Then you can see that the command in the log says .NET tests, where the tests are filtered by test category equal to smoke. And you can see that I have one more command line argument, which is .test output XML equals to this location. It means my NUnit test result will be generated at this location. Right now, I have two test cases which are marked as a smoke. So in this execution, only two test cases will get executed. Now let's wait for the test cases to get completed. And after that, once the test execution is done, then we'll have our test result XML file. And the same file will be consumed by the NUnit plugin, 
to publish the test result in Jenkins. You can see that the test execution has been done. Now the post build step will execute, which will record the unit test result. You can see it says recording n unit test results, and our build has been finished. Now, if I go back to the project, then you can see here the test result trend. You can see this is the build number nine where I have two test cases executed and both are passed. I have zero tests failed and the same is the count for skip as well. So this is the status of the ninth build you can see over here. And you can see we have the latest test result link also available now. If I click on this link, then you can see that this is the latest build where I have two test cases got executed and both are passed. So this way I can see my test result. Now let me go back to the project. And let's say this time I don't want to run any filter because I want to run all my test cases which I have in my project. So let me remove this filter from here and save the changes. Now, I should get a different count of test cases. Let me build the project again. We can see that build has been started. This time, I have removed the filter. So it should now execute all the test cases which I have in my project. You can see that now there is no filter command to filter my test. So all the tests which I have in my project will get executed and I'll have the difference in the test case count. So let's wait for the test execution to be finished. So the test execution is done. You can see that now we have a total of six test cases executed and out of those test cases, one has failed and five are passed. Now let's go back to the project. Here you can see that this time the build number 10 got executed. And you can see that on the ninth number build, we have two test cases executed and all two test cases were passed. While in 10th build, now we have total six test cases got executed. And out of six, five are passed and one is failed. So if I go to this test result link, then you can see that now we have one failure and five are passed. We can also see the detail over here as well. If you want to see the history, then you can see which test failed. This is the test which failed and you can see the reason that this element was not found. And this was the exception. If you want to see the execution details, then you can see we have three test cases available under home test and two test cases available under login test. And one test case failed under the login test. And then you can see the details here. These are the three test cases available under login test. And out of that, invalid user password test case failed. So this is how you can see the result of your test result in Jenkins. I hope you like this video. Please put your comments in the comment box. Also, please do not forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.